When I entered, I was just astonished by it and I really love it. The spring in Breda is officially here. And after the lovely visit in Pop-Up Concept Gallery, which we had a few months ago, just before Christmas, and uh, now we are invited to visit the Atelier of Lisbeth. Our auditory can actually see and visit the previous video and the podcast, Art Matchmakers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now let's hear more about your art and how actually Elizabeth became an artist and how, how this atelier started to exist. Mm -hmm. um, you were saying back then that uh, you have been studying fashion and this is uh, your specialty more or less because uh, you continue working in the art with uh, textile materials and materials that involve uh, design uh, as well. For example, wallpapers we will show some of the uh, great examples that you also work on mm -hmm. uh, for the new exhibition. Uh, so what was the, the first steps and how you saw yourself as an artist? I don't try to call myself an artist because um, I'm doing this part time and then very, very little part time. So um, I wanted to have more time to do uh, to work more in my atelier. But uh, I also have to work as a teacher, an art teacher. So there is not so much time to work as an artist. When do you call someone an artist? When he makes things of his own that you can see, oh, that's Elisabeth Godry. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm so far, uh, so I won't call myself an artist. Not yet. Why you choose uh, this track? to work especially with the textile and what was the first experience that you had with the textile materials? Mm -hmm. uh, textile is my background because I started as a, a student um, at the School of Art and um, I did uh, the fashion designing. Um, so that was a start with textile and it always became was part of my life. Um, I never worked in the textile uh, or in the fashion industry or um, as a designer, textile designer, but I did uh, other things which were close to uh, textile designing. So it, my work was always a little bit um, near textile designing, like what I used to study at the, at the art academy. Um, and all the time, I also had an atelier. Uh, it was not always this one. I only have it for two and a half years now, I think, or two years. Um, but I al al always had an atelier and um, I was always telling myself, you have to use that atelier to work in it and to, um, uh, to get, yeah, expl explode yourself, but it never, worked in that way because uh, I was also um, becoming a mother and uh, well there were other things in my life that that were more important than uh, doing your own work as a free artist. There are always things in life which makes uh, you make another choice um, because uh, being an artist is um, yeah having the time, having the money, having the spirit to do all that and when one and of the these energy as well because and the energy sucks so much energy from yeah from the earth yeah and maybe also the fear like when i'm uh, um, spending a lot of time uh, in my atelier working on things and it doesn't work mm. or nobody likes it or uh, well it's also the fear of um, failing the failure yeah, yeah. You experiment a lot with the intersection between the artistic approach and the design uh, by using some of the ready-made uh, art pieces that you can find in the decoration shop, for example, or um, ready-made design for wallpapers. Uh, you transform these works and then you show totally different uh, creative side of, mm -hmm. of uh, this uh, design. Uh, we have a few examples. Can you tell us a little bit more about the paintings that are behind? These are um, also wallpapers I found in a, in a shop. 
and I like them very much. I did some work in wallpaper designing and maybe that's why I'm still um, fond of wallpapers and uh, to see what you can do with it because it's very cheap. You can buy a whole uh, roll yeah, and then you can try everything with it. You have already uh, a background. Uh, when it's a beautiful background, the background uh, leads you to uh, something to do with it or yeah, to place on top of it. And so it becomes another kind of um, uh, texture or design. And that's what I like. So I was fond of the, uh, of the wallpaper itself and uh, I found it somewhere far away in a very cheap shop and uh, um, nobody would buy it anymore, I think, because it's uh, very ugly. <laughs> but I was, um, uh, for me it was um, um, the chance to make something new out of it and, and it worked. I, I become, became very glad with it and uh, happy and uh, I was wow! And then I thought, okay, um, when you're so fond of the, of the three things you made, um, why leave them in your atelier to the wall and they stand there, they do nothing. Mm -hmm. But I thought, okay, now I have three um, absolutely completed, completed yeah, art pieces, ready pieces. to be hanged on some, somebody's yeah, wall. That's, that's uh, still um, the, the, the last thing to do, to put them in the gallery and um, show them on the walls and sh uh, get a spot on it and um, well. So interesting that you were used to make uh, the pattern that didn't work for you because you were a little bit out of the cage and you didn't want to, to put yourself in the pattern of, of the wallpaper cage. And still, nowadays, uh, you implement the pattern as a background mm -hmm. where you can step on and then continue creating. And then, in that sense, you are not actually tied behind this pattern, but you are uh, completely free because of the pattern. Yeah. And uh, it's nice because I see it as you give a second chance to, to the pattern behind the wallpaper design. It's not for you so narrowing. Mm -hmm. Just the opposite. If in the past it was narrowing you, expecting that you will make a sequence, now it's making your paintings vivid and alive. Do you consider yourself as a growing artist? Do you see big change happening through the years of experience? Or it's like a little red thread that just go with the years? I think I see myself more as um, someone who has periods of working and then period not, period of working. And every time I make other kinds of kind of works, uh, but also always with uh, the textile um, goes with it, always. Um, I had a period that I made these monumental uh, kind of things, these uh, ropes with uh, the Jutte. They're from 2016. And what was the story behind this uh, piece of art? What, what it had to be, like composition of uh, separate... I had these ropes already for 15 years in my um, atelier and they were lying there doing nothing. I refounded uh, the, the textile Jute. Jute. Uh, I discovered that when you uh, uh, put out the, uh, the, 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 the yarns, no, the, the threads, no, yeah, <laughs> you say yeah. it, out of them, uh, you get a real nice pattern with the things uh, left over. I, I put them all in the, in the ropes. This uh, kind of work I also do with children this kind of work, and they like it very much. Oh, ah, they are uh, touring it. They don't make it, but they, they just make like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, that's so cool. <laughs> and then this is the piece that comes out. So yeah. this is the uh, yeah. basic material. Mm -hmm. And then this is the piece that comes out of this. Yeah. It looks fragile, oh, this also... because this looks very heavy and tough and thick. And then... 
you can make you it look. What is this? You can do so much with it. It's uh, yeah. it's very nice um, stuff to work with. And you are still enjoying it. You you didn't uh, leave it in the cupboard and forget about this artwork. No, I still like it. But what I what I say, I, it doesn't spring anymore. When I had an exposition with these, um, I made this this text with it. When I was working on it, it's it's true. It reminded me on my um, youth when I with my um, grandparents. It was more the 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 smell, the mm. smell of of it when it's um, fresh, and when I was working with it, I, I, all the time I had to think uh, about my uh, roots and my well, my youngest youth. Mm.